Hi friends, I'm Pastor Scott and this is Extraordinary Connection and I'm really glad you're here. There was a cross-country race in Spain and it was an important enough race that it drew competitors from all over the world, including a runner named Abel Mutai, a Kenyan who was an Olympic medal winner from the 2012 London Olympics. Like I said, this was a high profile race. The starter pistol went off and Abel took an early lead and he held the lead throughout the entire race, comfortably putting himself in first place. However, Abel didn't speak Spanish. So when he got to the finish line, he couldn't read any of the signs and Abel thought he had completed the race just a bit too early, about 20 meters too early. Abel stopped running before he actually won and before he actually crossed the finish line. Now running in second place for the race was Ivan Fernandez, a Spanish athlete. When Ivan noticed Abel had stopped running too soon, he started yelling at Abel to keep going, keep going. But just like Abel couldn't read Spanish, he didn't speak Spanish either. Abel didn't understand what Ivan was shouting at him and he still didn't cross the finish line. When Ivan caught up to Abel, instead of passing him and winning the race for himself, Ivan started pushing. The signs didn't work, the yelling didn't work, but pushing got the confused Abel to cross the finish line and win like he should have. A reporter rushed to Ivan, eager to get a statement, and asked Ivan, why did you do this? Why? did you throw the victory away? And Ivan replied, my dream is that one day we can have sort of a community life where we push ourselves and we also push others to win. The reporter pressed on, but why? Why did you let Abel win? To which Ivan replied, I didn't let him win. He was going to win. The race was his. Still confused, the reporter tried one more tactic and said, but you could have won. And Ivan replied, but what would the merit be in my victory? What would the honor be of that medal? And what would my mother think of it? That last part always makes me smile. What would mom think? What a kind act that he did. What a good sport. What a man of integrity Ivan was to do the right thing, even at the cost of his own victory. What a wonderful example of Christian kindness. See, kindness requires honor and it requires integrity. Kindness requires us to do the right thing in life, even when no one is watching and even when it costs us the race. Like the cliche goes, kindness truly is its own reward. It's true. I believe God gives each of us multiple opportunities to love and serve those in our lives each day. God gives us so many chances to be kind to those around us every day. Our family, our friends, but also strangers. And sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we could choose kindness, but it comes at a cost. Or maybe no one is looking, so we ask ourselves, do I really have to be kind? Do I really have to give that homeless person some help, even when, you know, there's no one around to see me? We ask ourselves, will we stop and help fix a flat tire, even if it's going to make us late for work? In those moments and more, kindness requires us to have honor and integrity to always do the right thing. So will you still be kind if no one's watching? Will you still be kind if it doesn't directly benefit you in some way? Will you still be kind if it costs you the race? I'll see you next time, friends, at extraordinaryconnection.org.